bad world. Just FYI, if you don't like swearing, neither the game nor this review is for you. Now, you may have already heard, this game is not terribly long. I would say one or two days and four or five hours in game time. So, you may want to consider just running it. With that said, it's a fuckload of fun, it never gets boring, it doesn't get old, and there is some replayability value. Upon completion you'll unlock a harder difficulty setting and two new weapons. And while it may not last terribly long, the time you spend playing this game, provided you're into beat-em-ups and extreme, brutal, bloody, gory violence, is gonna be the time of your fucking life. You rack up points by doing brutal and violent things to your opponents, like jamming a signpost or a trumpet through their head or shoving a barrel over their torso, and only then killing them. By, for example, shoving them repeatedly into spikes. You can also throw people into neon signs, which of course will electrocute them, force them face first against a speeding train. You can grab most opponents and you can walk around with them some, but the tougher ones are going to shake you off, unless you headbutt them to keep them quiet. And you can also toss them off tall buildings, onto train tracks, onto large sharp hooks. You get the idea. You can basically use almost anything in your surroundings as a weapon. You can also pick up weapons like spiked bats and knives, although these do wear down over time, but fortunately you can store them. One at a time, that is. As far as main attacks go, you can also do combos with just punching. You have basically one punch, and you can chain that into, I don't remember if it's four or five. <clears throat> In addition to that, as you may already know, you have a fucking chainsaw on your right arm. This doesn't mean that you can't use your right arm. I had first thought that to be the case, but basically you have a prosthetic right arm, and on there, somehow, they fit this large chainsaw blade onto. I think the game takes a certain amount of pleasure in not making complete sense. This chainsaw you can activate and use anytime you want. Regular enemies, bosses, whatever. You can use it until the gas runs out, and once it does, you just wait for it to recharge, and that doesn't take terribly long. By swinging the Wii mode either horizontally or vertically, you'll do either a left to right swipe or a from upwards and down swipe, respectively. And that brings me to something really, really great about this game. There are a number of situations where instead of just having you press buttons or do like combinations, you have to move the nunchuck or Wii mode in a certain direction or swing it or, or shake them when prompted to, and this will then activate specific moves. For example, the finishing moves, which is when you've practically killed an opponent and just gotta give him that last little push over the edge. You don't personally decide what finishing move to use, but there's a nice variety of them, and they're all really, really cool. And for example, the one where you swing the Wiimote, you'll be swinging the guy over your head and finally tossing him away. Another area where this is used are the power struggles. These are usually against the tougher enemies, like the mini-bosses and the bosses themselves. And typically, if you win a power struggle against a boss, either you will hurt him by doing that, or he'll give you a really nice, good opening for you to give him a big slash with the chainsaw or something. The short length of the game is of course necessary to ensure that it doesn't overstay its welcome, but the designers also did a couple of other things, and it worked. It never gets boring. As you get more and more points, gradually weapons and mini-bosses and various things will be unlocked, including these mini-games called Bloodbath Challenges, which are also available in the multiplayer as soon as you unlock them in the single-player levels. And you'll, for example, have to throw someone into a machine that'll squash them or use them as darts. And if you watch the trailer, you may be hoping, just as I did, that you actually get to ride that bitch and bike you see there. And you do. And you get to attack from it. You can swipe with the chainsaw at enemies on your right, or if someone's on your left, you can grab them off your vehicle and throw them onto the road. Hell, there's even a boss fight on the bike. The game is completely drenched in blood, testosterone, and adrenaline. 
which brings me to our lead character of Jack. Just Jack, literally. That's what he says when he first introduces himself. He doesn't have a whole hell of a lot of personality, and he's basically your average badass that has seen too much and is all hardened by it. The guy who does the voice also did the voice for Wolverine in both X-Men Legends games, as well as Superhero Motherfucking Squad. Sorry. In general, the characters are pretty stereotypical, and the plot is pretty cliched, but who the fuck is here for the plot anyway with this game? And it does have a pretty satisfying conclusion. The voice acting is great. I don't think there's a single character that's off even a little bit. And for those of you who've already heard and are kind of wondering, yes, one of the commentators is indeed John DiMaggio, or Futurama's Bender. And what's so cool about it is here he actually gets to say all the shit that you imagine Bender would say if it wasn't a network show that had to appease the censors at least somewhat. Yes, with most other sports, this has commentators. And a lot of what they say is really hilarious. You know, man's jokes. Think the scene in the chopper of Predator before they have to get to it. The only complaint you can really make about that aspect of the game is that the commentating does repeat itself a bit much. The sound in general is really cool, and the music is just fucking awesome. It really gets your blood and adrenaline pumping for all the killing you're going to be doing with rap that is intense and explicit. The sense of humor in this is mostly good, although there are a lot of puns and a bit of, bit of kind of silly material. One thing that kind of surprised me was the way this distances itself from all the gory violence you partake in. I mean, I guess they had to compromise, or at least felt they had to, to make up for all the gore and violence, but I mean, on the other hand, the Punisher sure didn't. Neither did the House of the Dead Overkill. True, that one had you shooting zombies, but still. This has a really cool, stylized, black and white look to it, fairly comparable to the likes of Sin City. I don't know of any other game that looks anything like this. The only color that isn't black or white is the red of the blood. The graphics are great, although a couple of things that aren't really supposed to be square are square, including fingers and snowflakes. The storytelling is done in comic book form with panels. The controls are intuitive, so you'll have the hang of them in no time. This has an extremely useful dodge move that will help make the boss fights much less frustrating. And that's good, because there are a ton of boss fights in this. The designs are pretty cool, and you get to fight ninjas and aliens in this. Also, although it might look like they will at first, the graphics will not make your eyes hurt. The camera tends to just be a third person, and if you want to turn real fast, you have to run towards the camera and then press, I think it's C, to center the camera again. Otherwise, it moves a little slower to follow you. The camera will make sure to get you the best angles on all the bloodshed you're causing, and in general, it's really not in the way. You also get a target lock, and this is extremely useful. And it's also really easy to turn off again. There's a reasonable variety to the areas you visit, including a city, this place called Asian Town, and something called Mad Castle. The physics are excellent. If you throw someone into someone else, they'll both go flying away, and you can indeed saw anyone. I've only really run into one bug. That one did force me to reboot, but still, that was the only one. Other than the bosses and the later levels, the game isn't terribly challenging. Your regular opponents are victims first and fighters second. I mean, it's a lot like a shooting gallery, only without guns. Basically, you grab them, you do stuff to them, you kill them, wash, rinse, repeat. But with that said, it doesn't get boring. It, they keep throwing new stuff at you to keep it interesting, and it works. It's a fantastic way to relieve tension or aggression, and you're probably getting a pretty decent workout as you're playing because you're constantly moving. That's it for the spoiler-free review. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.